Hello everyone, we are presenting our work on Zephyr, Zero Shot Post Hypothesis Rating. My name is Chow, and this is a joint work with Brian O'Connor, Marshall Albert, and David Held. Post estimation is critical for many robot manipulation tasks, where robots must interact with objects in the scene. Say this drill. In order to interact, we first estimate the position and rotation of the drill relative to the robot sensor frame otherwise known as the 6D pose. 6D pose estimation is particularly useful in many object-centric planning algorithms. Given an input image of the scene, object position and orientation is estimated using an object pose estimator, then used by a planning algorithm to perform a pose relative action on that object. Traditionally, for this pipeline to work, an object-specific pose estimator must be trained. This involves defining the object you want to detect, annotating a large amount of data, either through simulation or human efforts. Then a set of network weights are learned to find and localize that object. This process is then repeated for every object you plan to interact with. This results in excess effort in collecting data for each object, excess time in training new networks, and excess space to store the network weights. To solve this problem, we propose Zephyr, a zero-shot post estimation method. In this talk, we will be describing the zero-shot post estimation problem. This problem seeks to generalize between seen and unseen objects. We use labeled data to learn the algorithm that can be extended to novel objects without the need for labeling or retraining. Previous methods have explored this area in different ways, like using an autoencoder framework to map objects to a shared orientation latent space, learning latent 3D representations from multi-view images, or learning a comparison function between the shape and the image encoding. These methods, however, cannot handle cluttered things and require object-specific segmentation networks. In training these object-specific segmenters, these methods cannot be called zero-shot anymore. Classical methods inherently generalize as they contain no learned parameters. A family of such algorithms use point pair features defined by normals and distance, whose matching fully constrain and 60 poles. The method matches features between the model and the observation, and generates geometrically plausible pose hypothesis, and the voting, clustering, and refinement steps are used to find the best pose hypothesis. These point pair feature methods have ranked among the top post estimators in a recent benchmark, but they fail to meet the accuracy of deep learning methods. Our approach to the zero-shot post estimation problem is as follows. First, we obtain a point cloud model of the object to localize. Then, using the observation, we find many possible post hypotheses, score each of them according to its fitness, and select the best pose to be used in a downstreaming task. The primary focus of this work is on how to accurately score this hypothesis. Traditionally, counting in layers is the standard method to solve this problem. Features that are consistent with the estimated posts are counted. But handcrafted metrics cannot handle well when occlusions and clusters are involved. So can we do better by learning this scoring function? We will show that our method can better do this from data while still maintaining the generalization ability to unseen objects. Given an observation image and the object model, we estimate a set of post hypotheses using the observation data. In our case, we use hypotheses generated by point pair features, but any hypothesis generation method will work here. These hypotheses are then compared with the observation using projected model points and simple distance functions to produce point difference features. These point features are then processed by our scoring network to produce a distribution or pose hypothesis whose maxima is the most accurate object pose. The core of our method is based on point differences. This represents different dimensions across which our hypothesis can differ from the observation. Using the projected model points, we compare the color difference in the HSV color space for geometry we use the difference in the projected depths and the cosine angle between the observed and the projected surface normals. 
These features are then passed to our score network. We use normalized image coordinates to define the local neighborhoods and a simplified point net plus plus to map from differences to a final fitness score of the post hypothesis. To supervise this network, we compute the ground truth error of each estimated hypothesis as the average position difference of the object points at the estimated and the ground truth poles. During training time, the network sees a wide distribution of the poles and learns to reject incorrect ones. We then use the expectation of the log of this error as the loss. Specifically, the log here makes the score differences near the correct poles far more important than the wrong ones. At test time, we selected the highest scoring poles for the downstreaming task. Now remember the goal of this work is to generalize to objects we have never seen before. To evaluate on this task, we use two standard post estimation datasets, YCB video and occluded line mode. We split the dataset in half, training on one half of the objects and testing on the other. For YCB video, we train two estimators, each of which trains and tests on complementary object sets. As for occluded line mode, we train on line mode objects that are not present in the occlusion dataset, and test using the remaining objects. The standard point per feature method proposed by Ross and all can achieve adequate results, but when applying our scoring function to their estimated poles, we achieve a 50% improvement on unseen YCB objects. This outperforms other zero-shot methods on this dataset. While Waddell and all produces similar results based on the point pair features. Their implementation has not been released. Here, we also design a simple baseline where the depth in layer counts are used as the scores of the post hypothesis. And we can see that it gives very poor results. We see similar results on a cooler data line mode, achieving a 13% improvement over other zero-shot methods. As a reminder, our methods have not been trained on these objects. And if we compare to the objects our method has been trained on, we see that there is only a 5% drop in average recall between training and normal objects. In practice, we see that while the baseline fails on several objects, clumping these objects together, our method correctly estimates their poses. In this case, the naive scoring of the point pair features described by Drost et al. is not accurate in this highly cluttered scene. Similarly, the standard method fails where our zero-shot method succeeds. Now, while our method detects the most of the poses correctly in this scene, it does fail on the cat, which is highly occluded. In the VSB video dataset, the standard method has some hard failures, where our method mostly succeeds. More interestingly, the baseline fails to capture the texture on the geometrically symmetric objects while our method accurately estimates their poses, without seeing these objects before. We consistently see that geometric symmetry causes failures for the baseline. Though again, as our method is not specifically trained on these objects, it can also occasionally fail. To ameliorate this occasional instability and increase the tracking speed, a particle filtering-like approach can be used. In this scene, we are tracking the sugar box. Every end frame, we run the post hypothesis proposal method and score all of the post hypothesis. And this causes the set of poses to be distributed across the image. Then for the in-between frames, we use the hypothesis near the top scored posts from the previous frames, resulting in a tighter distribution. Blue outlines are low scored post hypothesis and the red are highly scored ones. We also tested our method using an object model we built at test time using standard surface reconstruction techniques. We found that our method is able to track this object using only a poor quality object model captured at test time, as shown on the left.
Even though the tracking does lose the drill for a second, it still highly scores the correct pose. So we were showing that our method accurately generalizes to unseen objects. But why does the method do this? We believe that it benefits from defining the problem as a function of point differences. This allows our method to focus on local differences and have a geometric neighborhood structure. Also because we use the subtraction between the model and the scene, the network does not directly see the object-specific information, and thus is less overfitting. With respect to how we define the neighborhood structures, we tried several structures in addition to what we used. Point at plus plus geometrically structured the space, while still allowing for a local neighborhood definition in the continuous image space. On the other hand, point net performs worse on IC objects. As even though it geometrically describes the image space, it does not allow for a local neighborhood structure. For convolutional neural networks, they have significantly stricter structuring of the space, discretizing all location into pixels. As for the individual features, we tested our method without each difference element and found that the color and depth information best improve our performance on unseen objects, with surface normal giving us a minor improvement. In conclusion, in this work we presented a zero-shot method for scoring post hypothesis. We show that through the use of point difference representations, we are able to accurately estimate the pose of objects not seen at training time. And we exceed the performance of other zero-shot methods on two major datasets. We would like to thank the sponsors of this project and welcome any questions you may have.